It's another Michael, who's a Bradford lad. Their love of this town, it's its really quite sad. I mean, it's the sixth largest English city, but it's a tad run down and a little bit shitty. With his dad, Bob, and his mum, Joyce, young Michael Aykroyd didn't have too much choice but to live in Shipley on Valley Road, next to the post office, there working a bird. But when Valley Road got knocked down, they could have got out. They could have left town, but to Frisinghall, Bob moved to a new location. A tobogganist became his brand new vocation. But in the absence of any decent snow, he just smoked his pipe and sold tobacco. So Michael Aykroyd isn't actually a fool, because unlike most kids in Bradford, he went to a school. And whilst at Woodend, he was reunited with Mike. And a friendship bloomed, a friendship like um, two blokes called Mike from the same street. Two more local Bradfordians you'd struggle to meet. Their families already knew each other. In fact, Michael's sister and Michael's brother nearly got it on. Are you a bit bemused? Well, don't forget this is Shipley, so don't get confused. So there's Michael at school. He's a sporting fan. He plays as much sport as a young man can. Rugby's his game. He thinks that he's tough. He joins in the scrum. He gets involved in the rough and tumble of the beautiful game. Ah, the beautiful game, but what is its name? Well, it's rugby, of course, but of which do I speak? League for the strong or union for the weak? I like union, Mr Atkinson. It's my favourite game. He much preferred league, but he couldn't speak its name for fear he'd be kicked out of the team. Because as we now realise, he wasn't as tough as he seemed. Because when you roll the clock forward a number of years and we start to analyse your choice of careers, a bewildering choice, the most bizarre selection, and to be totally honest, upon reflection, it's almost like your wrist couldn't have been any limper when you became Shipley's number one apprentice crimper. Eat your heart out, Vidal Sassoon. The old women of Shipley were over the moon with their brand new scissor sporting mincer for Ethel and Mabel, a brand new blue rinser. A veritable Tarzan in the cutting jungle shop. Sharp back and slides and the odd flat top. So at the end of a Saturday you'd hang up your last gown and you and the boys would get out on the town. The mucky duck, the park and then on to Cloud Nine. Jukes and silks if you had enough time. But Cloud Nine was a class joint and the women were hot. Two lads from Shipley who frankly were not. The bouncers were strict. They resisted your charm. They saw right through your quite obvious smarm. We're respectable businessmen, we've got businesses up road. But you were a hairdresser and a sparky, and to be frank, it showed. But one night out in Maestro's was a game changer. On Manningham Lane, we've all been in danger of meeting a woman and regretting it the next day. But you met Louise, what more can I say? And I'm sure on that night you'd like to give thanks, as clearly there was plenty left in the tank. Some people have pet names. Louise calls you Mush, but then there's some others which might make you blush. I can hear you groaning. Please make it stop. Well, there's nothing wrong with chubby chops. And when you've been abroad and you've got a tan and you become Louise's brown chop man. But we can't get away without mentioning sport. And living in Yorkshire, you might have thought you'd have chosen to follow some decent teams like the Peacocks, the Rhinos. But actually, it seems that you much prefer the Bantams and Bulls. Well, I'm really quite sure that that's quite dull. And it was an early age with Bob and Jim that your passion for rugby did really begin when at the end of every single game, you'd run to the corner and with no shame would pat every player enthusiastically, patting them twice if they'd played fantastically. When Odsall went bust, I bet you were sad. But Dewsbury's nice, it's not really that bad. Ignore the haters, they're just a bunch of losers and let's not forget beggars can't be choosers. To list the best pulls players is a short roll call. There's Mumby and Hunter and young Robbie Paul. There was Ellery Hanley, a real live wire, but not quite as quick as Martin Fire. You also love cars and you've got a dream of an 8 Series Beamer, a proper machine. You like German cars, you had a Golf GTI, and I do have a question. I'd like to know why. You'd trade in your hot hatch, but I'm sure now you feel much more at home in the D-mobile. So this poem's from Michael, your long-time best friend. You'll be relieved to hear that we're quite near the end. So Michael Aykroyd, it's tribute time. The more pleasant part of my satirical rhyme. 
Millie with a bobble is the apple of your eye. A most peculiar nickname, I won't bother asking why. Your other daughter, Bethany Sprog, of whom you're so proud. There's kind of this recurring theme of nicknames. I don't think it should be allowed. Your wife and soulmate, the lovely Louise, who's a much better runner, but I shouldn't tease. As you are a good runner, you've run the Great North Run, raising money for charity whilst having fun. You're a fighter, Michael, the virus you caught, but it wasn't sympathy that you sought. When after recovering your arm, you broke and you channeled Sean Edwards, another hard bloke. And you made it to the finishing line in a reasonably decent finishing time. So thank Michael Robinson for commissioning this verse, because in your life I've had to immerse myself for the last week or two, and I think I've got to know just a bit about you. And I know we've had a laugh and a joke, but Michael Aykroyd, you are a really top bloke. And on behalf of everyone, I'd just like to say, I hope you have a fabulous day.